Hello there, race fans, and welcome to round 11 of season 7 of the ASRC Oval Series. Tonight, we are here at the historic North Wilkesboro Speedway for 101 laps of late model action. And I'll tell you what, race fans, this is a very exciting track to be at, especially to have the 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 closing notes of our season at because this is a track that is just absolutely chock full of history and aside from that it's also just a very unique oval this track was opened back in 1949 and up until its closure in 1996 it was a staple of nascar and of american racing as a whole it's hosted every level of nascar and pretty much every form of short track racing you can think of but unfortunately back in 1996 it did shut down and there was a bit of a movement to reopen it back in 2010 and they had a couple of races over the summer of 2010 before it unfortunately closed down again at the end of the racing season but now here in 2022 for those of you who have been Following the latest racing news, North Worksboro has reopened and has hosted a couple of races recently, and they have some very big plans to completely renovate the track. So, big news for the North Worksboro Speedway. Very great to not refer have to refer to it as a former racetrack whenever we race here, like we would have to do in the past with some of the other tracks that unfortunately no longer exist outside of the iRacing.com platform. But that said, if you want to come check out Attrition Sim Race Campus and come race with us on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern, we got the Road Series with Multiclass MX-5 and TCR races for 101 miles. Following that, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, is we have the Oval Series, which is what I am broadcasting here now for 101 lap late model races. And then on Tuesday nights, we have Dirt Pro Late Model Races at 9 p.m. Eastern as well. So if any of those sound interesting to you, feel free to check out the league at ASRC Racing on Twitter or www.asrcracing.com. We may be in round 11 of the season for all of the series right now, but drivers are welcome to join the league at any point. There are no rules or requirements other than being a clean and respectful driver on the track. So definitely be sure to give the league a look-see, and even if you're hesitant to join so late in the season, we only generally have one off week, so the next season will be starting here pretty soon. But that said, qualifying is now in the book, so let's go down trackside and take a look at our starting lineup presented by the Majors Garage and Sim Racer Hub. Starting out on the pole tonight in the number 87 machine, five-time winner this season and season rookie driver, Koi Hasselu. To his outside in the number nine, it's the driver out of Michigan, it is Anthony Nadell, the driver who has been on the podium in every race he's done in this series except for one, so he may be looking to break that curse here tonight and finally get a win. Third place to our three-time series champion and three-time winner this season, Brian Sabelski in that number 85 NTO machine. Fourth place in what I believe might be his best start of the season in the number 14 machine is Nico Morelli. Fifth place to league admin in the Lernerville TV entry of Johnny Bell in that number 27 machine. To his outside fellow league ad admin in the Ray Bestis Breaks entry is Jason Gardner in the number 93. Seventh place in the number 15 is Garrett Streets, making his second start of the season. Eighth place to Jason Mong in the number 70 machine. Ninth place to Eric Gone in the 51 of Dirtbag Racing. 
10th place to rookie driver Robert Kelm. And finally, rounding out the field, another rookie driver of Wesley Whitfield. Actually, it is looking back at our timing and scoring sheet. It does look like Robert Kelm and Wesley Whitfield are not going to be making the field tonight. So, nine cars officially on the docket. Eric Gaughan is going to be the tail end of the field, not Wesley Whitfield. But... 101 laps are in the book for these late model drivers. The championship is still very much open, so things could get very heated on this 5 eighths of a mile or 1 kilometer long oval. The pace car is just about to pull off the track. A little bit of contact between the drivers on the starting grid. And we are going green flag racing here at the historic North Wilkesboro Speedway. Both lines off to a pretty solid start. A little bit of trouble back in the back as drivers get themselves sorted out. But up in front, Koi Hasselou and Anthony Nadell both off to very solid starts. Anthony Nadell managing to get it down to the low line pretty early on. Followed by Nico Morelli, who I believe started back in the fourth position, able to get around Brian Sabelski on the start. There might have been a little bit of trouble getting the car in gear. You have to rise through the gears pretty quickly in these late model stock cars on the restarts. And... Sometimes even milliseconds of difference can make all the difference in position, so definitely something these drivers have to think about. Looks like further back in the back, maybe a little bit of connection problems for that 27 entry of Johnny Bell, followed closely behind by Garrett Streets, almost less than two tenths of a second between these two drivers and still counting. But no pass is going to be made. This still is a very long race. A little scrape against the wall for Johnny Bell. Garrett Streets is going to look to the inside, but he decides to back out of trying to make the pass. Did not feel it was safe enough to do so, and that's pretty understandable. This track can be a little tricky for these drivers. I did mention during the pre-race that this, both being a very historic track, is also a pretty unique oval, and that is the case in the sense that it was actually not built on flat ground. The terrain was not flattened before the construction of this speedway, so you're actually going uphill on the backstretch, and then turns three and four, pretty normal, and then on the front stretch you're going back downhill, so... Normally, when we talk about speedways, we talk about the pass on the outside from Brian Sabelski there, but normally when we talk about unique racetracks, we talk about them being oddities in their corner designs. For example, tracks like Concord or Darlington, where it's not symmetrical and the corners are all strange and different. But no, here is a track where the straightaways are what makes it so unique. Brian Savelski trying to use that really low line to get around Nico Morelli, and it does look like he is going to make it work in that 85 NTO machine. One of the things I do really like about the North Wilkesboro Speedway and other tracks on the iRacing.com platform, especially like 2008 Phoenix, is that the infield isn't all paved. There is actually grass on the racetrack, and that is a pretty good deterrent for the drivers to not exceed track limits because I'll tell you what race fans if you get your tires on that crass that is going to create a lot of problems for your late model stock car. Garrett Streets trying to make the pass on Johnny Belly did look like he got his nose just to the left rear quarter panel but it's not going to be enough momentum out of the corner to make the pass he is going to back out of it yet again and just stay behind that number 27 machine try and be patient and make sure that when he makes his move he does make it count we are 12 laps into this race so still 88 more to go around the speedway 
No need to be making desperate moves this early into the race. But that said, I did talk to the drivers down in the paddock before the race started, and much like our event back at Concord last week, these drivers are going to need to pit for fuel. There, I, well, I want to say that there's no way around it, but Johnny Bell in that number 27 Lernerville TV entry proved us very much long last week by managing to pull off a second place finish on his fuel strategy. He was the only driver in the field not to pit for fuel, and he actually ran out of gas crossing the line at last week's race. So, Johnny Bell, one to try and prove our expectations wrong every single race, and I would not be surprised if he has cooked up some sort of absolutely unhinged fuel strategy for this race at North Wilkesboro as well. Earlier, I did mention that there was a little bit of irony of Jason Gardner and Johnny Bell starting side by side because they are the two league admins that compete in the Oval Series. But it's still just as funny because going into this race, Jason Gardner and Johnny Bell are actually tied for points in the championship standings. So these two drivers are currently battling it out for the fifth position in the championship. And... I don't know, I think it's kind of poetic that the two ad admins are currently tied in their score. Currently, the point standings, Brian Sabelski still in the lead with 208 points, despite having less wins than Koi Hasselu, Koi having five wins and Sabelski having three, but... Hasselu also joined mid-season, so that is part of the reason he's still down on points. We do have four drop weeks, of course, but even then, Hasselu is just 16 points shy of Sabelski. So depending on how this race finishes, there's a very real chance that Hasselu could be our new points leader coming out of North Wilkesboro. For reference, winning a race gives you 30 points, and you can earn up to an additional 10, I believe, by some of your actions on the track. You can get bonus points for being under an incident count limit, and then additional bonus points for having a flawless incident-free race. And then there, you can thirdly earn points by leading a lap. So... That is something that I've actually seen come into play with some of these drivers' fuel strategies is intentionally pitting later than the rest of the field to try and pick up the bonus point for the championship for leading a lap before they take their fuel. But our top four drivers, Sabelski, Hasselu, Nadell, and Eric Gon, currently our top four in the standings. Currently only having about 60 points of difference between them. Sabelski and Hasselu, of course, being 208 and 192 points. And then Nadell with 147 and Gon with 141. Then Gardner and Bell with 139. So things are looking very tight in the championship here this evening, race fans. Of course... We are not crowning our champion here tonight. That will be for our next race next week at the South Boston Speedway. But every race matters. There still is one drop week left to be calculated into the scoring. So that could have an effect on the lead Brian Spelsky has since Brian has been here for more races than Koi. I'm not too certain how the math is going to work out on that. So we will have to see what things look like coming into next week's race, but either way, things are tense all throughout the field. Currently up in fourth place is Nico Morelli, followed closely behind by Jason Gardner. We were looking at the closest battle on the speedway between Streets and Bell. Now, looking at our second closest little endeavor between Morelli and Gardner... Gardner in that number 93 Robestus breaks entry, trying to see if he can't figure out a way around Nico Morelli in the 14 
Justin Wilson Memorial entry. Where the Batgirl trait still trying to look to get his car around Johnny Bell's. It did look like for just a second there that he might have had it because the interval between the two drivers dropped down to less than a tenth of a second, but it looks like Streets is going to continue to back out of these corners. I wouldn't be surprised if he's both trying to conserve his tires and also make sure that he doesn't make contact with the driver of that number 27 machine. This track is very slippery sometimes and especially during the day since this track does not have any night lighting so drivers have to be very cautious about how they make their moves. You can see a little bit of wiggle out of the 15 of streets there. And it sounds like maybe Jason Mon probably. It sounded like Jason Mon might have scraped the wall a little bit in that number 27. And sure enough, you can see a little bit of damage around the right front there. So I think Jason Mon might have scraped the wall just a little bit, but it does not look like any sort of serious damage outside from cosmetics. So I think that Mon will still be good to continue this run. Currently, the closest battle on the speedway there. A little bit of trouble for Nico Morelli. I think Nico just scraped the wall as well because Jason just gained a little over two tenths of a second during the course of them going down the backstretch there. So I think Nico might have had a little bit of trouble in that number 14 machine. And you just heard him scrape the wall again there. Jason Gardner now looking to maybe try and make the pass on the number 14 car going into turn one here he is gonna dive it in just a bit and then back out and nearly get down onto the grass there but both drivers able to keep their cars going but at the expense of the 93 losing the ground that he made back up on morelli when he scraped the wall earlier Further up in the front, a little bit of a battle is also starting to develop between Nadell in the number 9 and Sabelski in that number 85 NTO entry. The NTO paint scheme being a parody of an NWO paint scheme, which Brian always likes to joke about because he says that he sees the NWO paint scheme on iRacing a lot, despite the fact he actually has more wins in this league than the NWO paint scheme ever got in real life. And it does sound like Nadell's going to scrape the wall a little bit. But you may be thinking, if it is the NWO paint scheme, then why is it NTO on that number 85 car? And that, of course, is because Brian Sabelski is a Twitch streamer. You can actually see it on the hood of that car under the NTO. Does a scrape on the wall for Nadell. Brian Sabelski majorly catching up. Brian is a Twitch streamer, and so he modified it a little bit to look like his Twitch channel, that being twitch.tv slash Nihon Tiger. But Sabelski streams pretty much all of his iRacing races on his Twitch channel, as well as a pretty good amount of modded Minecraft. So if any of that interests you, be sure to go check out his Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Nihon Tiger. But this now makes three pretty close battles around the field. Sabelski and Nadell for second, Gardner and Morelli for fourth, and finally Streets and Bell for sixth. Streets trying to make a pass on the outside of all places, but not going to work out for him. He's going to cross him over and try and get the run on the bottom side, but that's not going to work out either. Streets getting dangerously close to that number 27 machine though and it looks like in the next couple of laps he might be able to make this pass happen if he just keeps being persistent. It is definitely possible for the driver of that number 15 to machine to make it happen. Even closer on the speedway. Jason Gardner right up against the bumper of Nico Morelli is going to go down on the grass a little bit in that Raybestos Brakes entry. But backing out of the corner a little bit, not wanting to make contact with Morelli, 
but he was pretty close to them there. Oh, and side by side, further back, Streets finally going to make the pass on Johnny Bell. Johnny pushed up to the high line. Jason Mong not far behind at all. Mong going to slide it a bit through the corner. Going way up high. We may see the drivers even try to push it three wide. Scratch that. Jason Mong is going to back out through the corner, but... These three drivers, very, very close together, very close to duking it out with one another. Jason Mong also looking to try and get his nose under the number 27 entry. Jason Mong in that number 70, he may be second to last in this race right now, but Mong is actually... Scratch that, that's not... I, I was saying things that don't make sense. Mong is currently back in the seventh position in the championship standing, so he may not be having the best run at this race, but he is still very much in contention for the top five spots in the league championship for the series. A bit of a wiggle for that number 70 machine through the corner there. Up in the front, Brian Sabelski looking to make the pass on Anthony Nadell. Doesn't look like it's going to happen to go. Nadell getting a much better run out of the corner, but it does look like that number nine machine might be sliding a little bit on corner exit. And he's definitely entering the corner at a much higher angle than Sabelski is. Sabelski trying to to keep the car down low and it does seem to be working better for him than it is for Nadell but that also is going to come at the expense of tire wear and I would imagine that tire management is going to definitely come into play this race as Zabelski and Nadell side by side going into turn three and Sabelski is going to complete the pass. Nadell might try and cross him over there. Now Nadell attempting to dive it down on the low side, but it's not going to work for him. He is going to slide it a little bit on corner entry. Not good for that right rear tire. Nadell now back to the third position here tonight. But neither of these drivers currently have anything to offer for our race leader of that number 87 Montgomery Ward entry of Koi Hasalu. Currently with an almost 9 second gap on our race second place drivers. Anthony Nadell going to pull that number 9 late model stock into pit lane. Go ahead and take fuel now that the flags have been crossed in the air. We are halfway done with this race. Brian Zabelski also going to go ahead and bring that 85 NTO machine down here and get the remaining fuel he needs to continue on his race as well. That's going to put Nico Morelli up into the P2 position, followed closely behind by Jason Gardner, but that will probably change once we cycle through pit stops. Green flag pit stops currently underway, and Sabelski and Nadell both spent about 13 seconds in their pit box, so I think it's possible that they took tires along with their fuel, so that is going to put both drivers a lap down. But, of course, Lucky Dogs are enabled, so should a caution come out, that would put them back on the lead lap. Or, once the pit cycle cycles through, that will also put them back on the lead lap. A very fast pit for Koi Hasalu, putting him back down to the 6th position. So, he is the only driver that's pit under green that has not gone down a lap from his pit stop still has a little bit of ways to go to make time back but we will have to wait and see how these pit cycles end up working out because you never know Johnny Bell in that number 27 machine ended up finishing last week's race in second place because of his fuel strategy he ended up managing to go the whole race without pitting once he managed to save just enough fuel to make it happen 
Nico Morelli, the next car down on pit lane, going to send him back a couple of places while he takes the fuel needed to get to the end. Johnny Bell and Jason Bong currently duking it out for the third position, at least before pit cycles go through. And it's like I said, you do get bonus points for leading a lap, and I would imagine that that might come into some of our drivers' pit strategies. So Jason Gardner and Nico Morelli both will have a bonus point for having led at least one lap here at this North Wilkesboro Speedway. And I would imagine should Gardner pit in here soon, then Streets will have the lap led bonus then of course Bell and Mong. Jason Mong was very close to catching up to Johnny Bell but it looks like he has fallen back a little bit. Currently battling happening back in the back as the caution flag is out. Color me surprised race fans. I actually was not expecting any cautions tonight. Let's Let's see what happens. Supposedly something is wrong with the number 9 entry of Anthony Nadell in that number 9 machine. It does look like he has maybe a little bit of right front. Oh yeah, yeah, you can see the hood of that car is crumpled up a little bit. The rest of the drivers that have not taken their fuel yet obviously going to use this caution to not sacrifice position under the yellow. Let's see if we can't look back and figure out what happened to the number 9 of Anthony Nadell. Nadell sending it down really low to try and get around the 85 and the car just gets unsettled on him and the rear end snaps out and that's going to send him into the inside retaining wall here on the front stretch. A little bit of nose damage for that number 9 machine but... I don't think that will be anything too disruptive for him. Currently riding on board with our chopper camera here at the North Wilkesboro Speedway. You can see the car snap a little bit. He manages to save it and then it snaps again on corner exit. And there's just not a whole lot he's able to do but go along for the ride. Let's ride along with the driver of that number 9 entry. You can hear him hard on the throttle, diving it down. The rear end snaps out on him, using the throttle to save it a bit, and then it just goes a second time, and that's where he lost it, race fans. Going back live, Anthony Nadell now filtered back to the ninth position. Still on the lead lap, but... I'm assuming he's going to be getting the wave around here and put at the tail end of the field. Of course, that is if iRacing stewarding works correctly. There, there sometimes can be issues with, with the automatic cautions putting cars in the wrong spots. So, according to our timing and scoring, Anthony Nadell should be our last car on the lead lap. So he should get cycled back around. Yeah, sure enough, Anthony Nadell is going to be given the wave around the pace car, sending him back to the ninth position. All drivers back on the lead lap courtesy of that caution, so that is always great to see. And it looks like trouble for the number nine of Nadell. Oh, never mind. He wasn't waved around the pace car. He was just sent directly to the back of the field. Or not, because that's now putting him a lap down on our timing and scoring sheet. I don't know. That's for race to control to figure out, and not me. Hasselu and Sabelski make up the front row, and we are going green flag racing here again. Trouble. I think I just heard someone's engine explode. I'm not quite sure. Everyone is off. I'm not quite sure what happened on that restart. It seems like a little bit of a checkup throughout the field, but everyone is sending it into turn three. Three wide down the front stretch. Jason Mong getting a little bit of loose out of the corner. You could see the number 70's right rear slipping out a bit. And trouble again for two drivers scraping the wall. Garrett Street's getting it down in the grass and getting a little bit loose, but he is able to keep that. No oh, and around goes the 15. 
The second caution flag is out here on lap 68 for the 15 of Garrett Streets. You know what they say, race fans. Cautions breed cautions. And we're, we're reinforcing that very well here tonight. Second caution on the speedway for the self-spin of Garrett Streets. Let's ride on board with our iRacing.com chopper and get a look back at what happened to this number 15 entry. Garrett Streets done a dive it down low and just not very much you can do when the right rear snaps out on you like that. Gonna get a cockpit view as well, riding on board with the... Oh, that's the wrong... Wrong footage. Right on board with the 15 of Garrett Street, sending it low down into turn one. It is very slick down on the apron, and sure enough, the car just snapped out on him. He tried to gas it up and stabilize it, and no such luck for the number 15 machine. But it looks like only minor cosmetic damage for the most part on that black and orange entry. Looking very striking with the teal numbers, and I'm sure it won't come up on the broadcast at all, but on his number plate, or on his nameplate, it does not actually have his real name. It just says wildcard, so certainly a bit of a wildcard of that number 15 machine as he brings out another caution on the speedway. All drivers still on the lead lap. The rear end of the field made up of Streets and Nadell, both cars having damage, but... For the most part, the rest of the field is looking good. The lights still on on the iRacing.com pace car, so we are going to be going around the speedway at least one more time before we go green flag racing. Drivers are starting to stack up already, so I would imagine that... Yeah, sure enough, the lights are still on. I'm wondering if the caution might have been extended for some reason. Either that or I am just really bad at math, race fans. So we are going to take it around the speedway one more time before we start thinking about going green. There could be a little bit of communication error between race control and the drivers and not being in the correct position and nonsense like that. All sorts of reasons can cause precautions to be extended or I could just be really bad at math and this is a normal amount of pace laps. Either way, now the lights are off on the iRacing.com pace truck. Currently top 5, Koi Hasselu, who has led every lap of this race. Brian Sabelski, Jason Gardner, Johnny Bell, the two league admins side by side yet again. And Nico Morelli in the number 14 machine rounding out our top 5. Then, of course, Streets, Gone, Nadell, rounding out the nine remaining drivers. The pace car is off. We're going to try this once again, race fans, waiting real late to throw the green. The green flag is out. Drivers are shifting back up through the gears. A little bit of trouble on the start for Jason Mong. Driver's going to send it three wide on the restart, and... This is what we said about cautions, read cautions. Uh, apparently the caution flag's not going to come out for that. It does look like Morelli has engine trouble though, so we might have the caution come out when the drivers come back around. Scratch that, we are still green flag racing despite whatever just happened on that restart. Driver's gonna go around Morelli, Morelli pulling it down into pit rain. That that 14 late model stock car definitely having some severe engine troubles. Very unfortunate for the driver of that number 14 machine. He has had some absolutely terrible luck this season. Trouble for the 51 as well. The 51 way off the pace down the front stretch. The leader's going to bounce off the wall a little bit going around him. Everyone, for the most part, cycling around just fine. Further back in the back, Johnny Bell and Jarrett Streets 
battling it out. Bell stuck up on the high side. It does look like Streets is going to make the pass. Bell's going to cross him over and dive it down on the inside. Try and take that position back. Drift up just a little bit. Going to back out of the pass or else if he kept pushing that car would have spun out. Everyone kind of having a bit of a close battle on the speedway. Streets is going to drift it up through the corner and... Morelli coming out of pits with that number 14 machine, still very damaged on the outside, but hopefully they manage to work out whatever engine issues were plaguing that car. Johnny Bell looking to try and make the pass out again, but it's not going to work out. Let's take just a second while we have a little bit of lull to look back and see what happened on to that number 14 on the restart here looking at the black and red number 14 of nico Morelli, streets mong and gone going to take it four wide on the restart three wide excuse me and that is what's going to cause the spin but of course since it was at the back of the field and no more cars were coming the caution flag did not get thrown by iRacing's automatic stewarding so very unfortunate for the driver of that number 14 machine, but despite all the damage, he is back out on the racetrack. And it does look like Eric Gaughan now down on the pit lane as well. That's going to put Nico Morelli back up a lap. Both drivers got some very heavy damage from that incident. Speaking of drivers with... Well, not much damage, but a little, little bit of right front damage. The 85 of Brian Sabelski losing the leader of Koi Hasselu just a bit. But right behind him, Jason Gardner slowly but surely making up the gap. Gardner has been having some pretty decent runs this season. He actually was leading the race at the first week of the season back at Irwindale for a pretty decent chunk of the race, battling it out with Brian Sabelski. And then unfortunately, he scraped the wall on the last lap, allowing Sabelski to take the win. But these two drivers have had, I'd say, a bit of friendly rivalry all throughout this season. So... Great to see Gardner and Zabelski duking it out yet again, and of course, great to see Gardner back up in the top three spots. Koi Hasselu sailing away with the race just a little bit, up to a two-second gap on these drivers. I believe he had up to a ten-second gap before the first caution came out. So... Unless something goes catastrophically wrong for the driver of this number 87 machine, I think he is going to sail away with it. That said, we've seen it many times throughout this season. Anything can happen in the race, and it is not over until the leader has taken the checkered flag. We've had several incidents where people that we were absolutely certain that were just stealing the show had something go wrong and a completely unexpected winner took their place so don't quote me on Hasselu winning this race just yet race fans but that said the gap is growing between Hasselu and Sabelski now up to 2.6 seconds and Jason Gardner is looking closer and closer on that number 85 machine. Further back in the field, Jason Mong trying to get around Anthony Nadell. Nadell taking a bit of a higher line, and Nadell's spinning. He is going to hold on to that number 9 machine despite that massive slide, but so no caution, but definitely going to really hurt that number nine's tires and also make him lose a position to Mong from that slide. Kudos to him for managing to save the car despite that though. The gap still closing between Gardner and Zabelski now to, down to three tenths of a second and closing. These two drivers fairly evenly paced but Gardner actually did set a faster lap that time by, by only two 
hundredths of a second. So these drivers are very evenly matched here, race fans. Nine laps to go. The clock is ticking if Gardner wants to get this position on Sabelski. Gardner losing a bit of time there, actually. It looks like he might have had a bad corner entry because he did lose about a tenth of a second on Sabelski coming out of turn four there, but he pretty promptly gained it back up. It looks like Sabelski generally is having better corner speed, but Gardner is faster on the straights because I'm looking at their interval and it's just fluctuating between 0.3 going into turn one to 0.4 at the exit of the turn. And then of course it goes back down to 0.3 going into turn three and going back up to 0.4 coming out of turn four. So these two drivers very equally matched, but it looks like Sabelski is running the better line. Up at the front, Hasselu passing lap traffic of Nico Morelli as the big high five is up in the air. Five laps to go around the North Wilkesboro Speedway. Currently our closest battle on the track still between Gardner and Sabelski. Gardner still having that fluctuations between two and four tenths of a second and Anthony Nadell off the track. Anthony Nadell coming back on in that number nine machine, but he is very slow. The caution is not going to come out, but definitely some big trouble for that number nine entry. When I said that I hoped he would be able to break the curse, I was saying that in the intention of I hope he gets a win, not I hope that he falls out of the podium position. Very unfortunate for the driver of that number nine entry. Brian Spelsky making up a bit of a gap on Gardner, now up to half of a second. Still the closest battle on the speedway by far. But there is... Well, I was going to say that they've gained up a little bit of ground Hasselu, but they really haven't. Hasselu now up to a five second lead as the white flag comes out. Hasselu rounding turn three and into turn four. Koi Hasselu is our race winner, followed by Brian Sabelski just behind him, and Jason Gardner losing it through the corner a little bit. Garrett Streets, Johnny Bell, Jason Mong, Anthony Nadell still on pit lane, so next driver coming around is Nico Morelli. So, sixth race win. For Mr. Koi Hasselu, he showed up about a third of the way through the season, and I'll tell you what, race fans, he has put on a very dominant performance every single time. Actually, I believe since Hasselu joined the race, joined the league, Hasselu has won every race except for one where it was won because he just wasn't able to attend, I believe. I'm looking back through the standings real quick as Hasselu does his victory lap. And sure enough, Hasselu has won every race that he has attended in the ASRC Oval Series. So that will make it the sixth win for the driver of that number 87 machine. Let's see if we can't dial him up and get his thoughts on what happened this race. Of course, um generally does take the drivers a little bit to get dialed up because they don't have discord open while they race i don't believe so we will see if we hear from our three 
race winners, well, our three podium finishers, I should better say, here tonight. Currently dialing the three of them up. Koi Hasselu, Brian Sabelski, Jason Gardner. So far, currently no one picking up on the radio, so we will give them all just a moment to answer. And hopefully we will be able to hear from everyone. Um, currently no response from Sabelski or Hasselu, so we might just have to do this in the reverse order to give them both more times to show up. So, starting back with our third place finisher instead, Mr. Jason Gardner. How are you feeling after that race? You're finally back on the podium and here talking to me once again. Yeah, it's yeah, it's glad. Yeah, it's good to finally get a top three, especially after I have some bad luck throughout the rest of the year, plus unable to show up to, to other for personal reasons. Yeah, it does happen to the best of us, but at least there are the four drop weeks this season to help mitigate that a little bit. You are, at least going into this race, you were fifth place in the standing, so despite the races you weren't able to attend, you're still very much in contention here. I believe, actually, yeah. you're tied for fifth place with Johnny going into this race. Yeah, mathematically, I'm uh, still in it. The real Realistically, the way Brian and um, Koi have been running, uh, they I think both of them ain't got to show up, and I have to dominate the next race to even mathematically have a shot. Hey, you never know. Don't give up hope, Jason. And even if you aren't in contention for the championship, you could still easily pull off a top three finish overall. But is there anyone you'd like to thank for getting your number 93 or a bestest breaks entry here on this podium position? Hey, you know, I got to thank, thank Johnny Bell. He's, um, yeah, he, he's the owner of a uh, attrition sim race campus. Without that, we wouldn't have this this league and yep. And heck, if it wasn't if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be here. Yeah, Johnny certainly does a whole lot of work for all of us, and I am certainly grateful for all the effort he puts into this league, and of course, all the effort you put into this league too, because you kind of are responsible for the Oval Series one way or another. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you're right. The um <clears throat> But um is there anything else you would like to say before I forcefully throw you out of my office? Um No, that'll be it. All right. Thanks for coming out and I look forward to seeing you next week. I look forward to seeing everybody next week, too. Going a little bit backwards on our finishing order here, just because it's the order that people join the voice call. Brian Sabelski, you're on the podium yet again, and it looks like Koi's win might have shaken up the standings just a little bit. How are you feeling after that race? Yeah, it was a long race. Um, I did the best I could. All things considered, just trying to hang out there and do what I could to hopefully try and keep keep it a little bit close. Um, I know it's going to be tough next week with everything going into uh, the finale. So, yeah, I was just trying to keep it as tight as possible, and I needed that second place. I knew Corey was lightning quick here tonight. You know, he's been lightning quick all season. Uh, I do have to say I do appreciate another fellow fellow Midwestern driver who does the uh, the the Polish victory lap. That's nice nice to see that there's at least two of us that do that after wins. Um, yeah, you know I feel bad for Anthony. I think I was able to look back at the replay. He just got loose getting under us, getting under me and Eric going into th going into three and four, and saved it, and then he spun again. 
I mean, that's that's a bummer. I was really enjoying racing him. He was lightning. Like Anthony was doing a really good job. He was lightning fast all night too. And Jason was trying to hunt me down there at the end. Probably would have got me if I'd slipped up. Yeah, you all put on a heck of a run here tonight. And, of course, it's always great to come out here and watch y'all compete. So, of course, I got to thank all of you for putting on these shows every week. Absolutely. Is there anyone you'd like to thank for getting this NTO machine here on to the second place finish? Uh, just everyone who's hanging out in Twitch chat right now. Hi, everybody. Um twitch.tv slash Nihon Tiger. Go follow him right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just everyone for Johnny for putting on the league, Jason for doing all the fun administrative stuff. And yeah, you know, I was looking forward to this. It was definitely a good race. Um, just uh, one of those situations where you kind of hope you could have got that first place win, but you did the best you could, grab as many points as you could, and kind of have to leave it up to next week i guess yeah south boston certainly going to be an interesting race that's personally a track that i'm a huge fan of racing at so i i expect next week to be very very exciting for everyone involved yeah i think so yeah is there anything else you'd like to say before you get kicked out brian nope uh just uh hope hope to see you here next week so it'll be uh be interesting Good deal. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. And finally, rounding out the podium here tonight. Now, six-time race winner. If I am correct, you've won literally every race in ASRC since you've joined it. Koi Hasselou, how are you feeling tonight? Um, pretty good. You know, um, this week I've ran a lot of officials and late models at Wilkesboro, and Felt really comfortable and had a really good week in officials as well. So I was hoping to have something like that come out outcome tonight, and uh, we got it done. Yeah, certainly did. How are you feeling knowing that I, I am not too sure on if you're actually the points leader now or not? It is incredibly close one way or another, like a point or two difference. How are you feeling going into next week, knowing that you and Sabelski are pretty much neck and neck here? Um, I think it's gonna be really fun, right? Like, how many leagues have, you know, the championship race come down to the last race where it's one or two points, and it be hopefully we'll put on a good show for everyone that's watching and uh, have a lot of fun with it. It's certainly a lot of fun coming out here every week and putting on these broadcasts for y'all. So certainly beats me riding around in the back but anyone you would like to thank for getting your sixth win here in that number 87 machine um everyone that races obviously you know brian was saying how polish victory lap and stuff and i grew up watching races in midwest and you know they do that in real life so i think that's cool to do and Anthony, you know, someone to talk to in Discord, he had some technical issues with his wheel falling off tonight. He just got a new stand, so I feel bad for that. Um, you for broadcasting, obviously, and everyone involved putting on the races. I know you guys do a lot with uh, three series per week. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, though. It's certainly worth the effort. And I'll tell you what, this has been an amazing season to watch, so I'm certainly excited to round things off next week. Yeah, hopefully we have a uh, race that, you know, wraps up the whole season and comes down to the final few laps, just like the final race. Yeah, we, we'll have to see. Is there anything else that you would like to say before we round things off here tonight? That's it. Just, you know, thanks for everything everyone does in here, and it's a really fun league to race always. Yeah, well, thank you to coming out, and... I'm excited to see what you and Sabelski have to offer each other next week. Yes, thank you. Have a good night. You too. And with that, you've heard from our three podium finishers, Mr. Race winner Koi Haslu himself with six wins under his belt now. Mind you, this is a 12-week season, so... A very impressive streak for the driver of that number 87 machine. Of course, following that, 
well, at least was the points leader going into this race. I'm not quite sure how he stands after this race. Mr. Brian Zabelski coming P2 this race, and then finally, rounding out the podium, league admin Jason Gardner. That said, let's take a real quick look at our race results before we end things off here tonight, of course. Koi Hasselu, Brian Sabelski, Jason Gardner are top three finishers. Then behind them, Garrett Streets. This is only Streets' second start this season, though he is not a rookie to ASRC as a whole, but still a very solid finish for the driver of that number 15 machine. Fifth place to Johnny Bell in the number 27 machine in the Lernerville TV entry. 6th place to Jason Mong in the number 70 machine, 7th place to Nico Morelli in the 14, and finally, or not finally, 8th place to Anthony Adele in the number 9, and then finally rounding out the field in the 51 is Eric Gaughan, and of course Robert Gelm and Wesley Whitfield, both drivers, did not make the starting grid, they did not actually compete in this race, so 9 drivers came to the field nine drivers left some in better condition than others and now everyone waits with bated breath as next week we head to the south boston speedway to conclude season seven of the asrc oval series which is the first season of the late model stock car so definitely going to want to tune in next week same day, same time, Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern for our championship race. Thank you all for coming out, race fans. It's always great to see y'all. I'm your host, Icy Otter, and I will see you all next Monday.